So better synthesis used to how welcome. Uh, what? What did I just say? Should we try that again? Welcome to how to use synthesis better. So I'll explain why I did that in a moment or two. And what we're going to do in this is trending this helps should you easy with techniques some. I know that's ridiculous what I've just done. It will make sense in a couple of minutes, I promise you. This training should help you with some easy techniques. Okay, what we're going to look at, natural language. I just gave you a couple of examples that were not natural. They don't make sense. If you're speaking to somebody, they would look at you, what's the guy talking about? A blog post, an article, a web page is just the written form of a conversation with a real person. So bear that in mind when we talk about natural language. Now, by the way, did anybody actually understand what I said then when I said it the wrong way around? It didn't make any sense, did it? Even if you could follow what I was saying, it's like, why, why say it that way? We're going to talk about less is more. Uh, and if you have a super long keyword phrase for targeting in the search engines, that's cool. It's a beneficial thing to do. But for an article generation, it's a very poor thing to do. So we'll talk about less is more. And we're going to talk about the use of sub keywords and how many words in total, because there's some interesting things we've seen as we've analyzed people's use of synthesis. So this should only take about 30 minutes, maybe a couple of minutes more with questions, but it's fairly straightforward what I'm going to show you. Most of it, when I say it, I suspect all of you will be saying, well, yes, of course, that's obvious. But what we're seeing is that many people aren't doing the things that are obvious. And so uh, we're going to show you that right now. So we're actually going to jump into synthesis and I'm just going to load that up now and then pull it over to the other monitor. There we go. Just loading a couple of seconds and I like to make this a little bit bigger so I can see what I'm doing. It doesn't affect how it works. It's just I like I like a bit of working space with these tools. So we're going to look at the synthesis tab here. This is the important one because it creates a unique article. Uh, article Builder and PLR are good for getting some seed articles for kind of filler content, but the synthesis one is where you'll get your unique articles. So let me go over a couple of things that we have here. You have a keyword box, and this is the main keyword. I'll come back to that in a moment. You have sub keywords. It says right here, one per line, maximum of five. I've seen people put in 30 keyword, sub keywords. You're not going to get 30 sub keywords in an article. It just doesn't happen. A maximum of five doesn't mean you should put five either. Then we have the length of the article. Now, not many people go for 50 words because it's kind of a snippet, but some people do go for a short article, 250 words. So here's the first little thing to remember. The number of words that you are asking for in the article can only support a certain number of keywords and sub keywords. So if you have a main keyword, which is weight loss, and then in the sub keywords, you've got something like paleo diet, keto diet, ketoacidosis, uh, diets for diabetics, type one and two, and then a couple of other phrases. In all honesty, it's not going to be able to generate an article in 250 words, having all those talking points. If you think about doing it yourself, could you really fit in that many sub uh, keywords, subsections in 250 words? It would be quite difficult to do. Now, if you go up to something like the 750 words article, you might have a better shot at that for sure. But generally speaking, less is more. And the sub keywords are really, uh, that box is designed to help you just tweak the article a little bit, and I'll give you some examples in a couple of minutes. So your main keyword is where you start the, the process. And a keyword can be a single word, acne, for example. It can be a phrase like how to treat acne. Um, but it shouldn't be a massively long phrase. So if I give you an example, and, and some of these phrases are not um, specific to what we've seen in the analysis we've done. I don't want to give away anybody's keywords, but they are examples of the kind of keyword length that we're seeing from some people. How to treat acne if you're a teenager who doesn't have a great deal of money to spend on skincare products. It might well be a great topic, but it's a lousy keyword because it's way, way too precise. 
And so the general article that you're going to get back can't possibly cope with that kind of length of keyword. But then on the other extreme, if you put acne or golf or muscle or weight, if you were to ask a human being to write an article, what are they going to write about? Now, you know in your head, if you put acne, you know what you mean. Are you looking at acne solutions? Are you looking how to do home care um, face masks? Are you looking at how to avoid it? Are you looking at the uh, psychological implications of having acne as a teenager and how to get over those uh, the, the bullying that might happen at school? You see, there's a wide range of topics if you just put a single keyword. If you put a single keyword, you will get a different kind of uh, article every time, but it won't be a precise article. It will still be about the topic, but it may not be quite what you wanted, and that's where you can drill down with uh, the sub keywords. So if you were to put something like acne, and then you wanted to put in sub keywords like skin care, now we've got the general topic of acne, which the article will be generated about, but the uh, AI engine is going to try and talk about it in terms of skin care to avoid it um, or to treat it. So we're narrowing down the field from a very wide topic to a slightly um, more precise one. You may not be interested in skin care. Uh, your topic on acne might be um, for prevention. Uh, Meg's asking if we'll be looking at the suggest tool. I'll be doing that as well. Yes, we will in a moment or two. Um, so your sub keywords for acne, if you wanted to do a slightly different take on the question, um, that, so we've had skin care, we might look at the word prevention. It would give you a slightly different article. So the combination of the main keyword gives you the overall broad topic. The sub keywords, and I would recommend that you don't use more than one or two, generally speaking. Uh, allows you to drill down a bit. But here's the thing. If you're using a couple of different sub keywords, they kind of need to be somewhat related because if they're too far apart thematically, then an average length article is going to struggle to cover those ideas properly. So what we're looking for, and this feeds into a question that Michael was asking earlier, what we're looking for is a broadish topic in the keywords and then narrowing down a little bit in the sub keywords. You can use a fairly narrow uh, keyword in the main keyword box if you want to. So we could actually put it like this. Uh, just bear with me one second while I take a sip of water. Apologies. So uh, you could put it as acne prevention. And by the way, I won't be generating the actual articles today. I just want to show you the kind of things you can put in here. Um, acne prevention, it's a fairly specific keyword. We're talking about the topic of acne and how to prevent it. Um, if you start going to for teenagers, that's probably OK. It's only four words. But if you start making the phrase longer, you're limiting the potential article that you can get back. If you want a very, very narrow article, you may have to do some tweaking of it yourself once you've got the sort of more general article. So if you wanted a really super long keyword, break it down to a smaller, more sensible length of keyword, and then add a little bit yourself manually if you need to. But if you try to do something with 15 words in it as a keyword, it's not happening. So that's the, the thing we need to think about. Um, now, you could also, if you wanted to, so we've got acne prevention here as the main keyword. Uh, and then you could put teenagers in here. So the article will try to look at the acne prevention topic from the perspective of teenagers. So there's a couple of different ways you can do that. If you start adding in a, a whole bunch of other keywords, you're just making it impossible on an average size article, 500 words or whatever. It's impossible to get enough content in there for all those different things. So although you can put five keywords in the sub keyword box, I would say one or two is probably a good choice. Now, we're going to have a look at the keyword suggestion tool in a moment, Meg, but I want to uh, jump to the jobs tab. So when you create a job, effectively, it's the same as this, but it's on a timer. 
So when we go into the jobs and we add a job, you choose your blog. I haven't set any up, by the way, so you can't see my blogs here. Choose your blog, category, length, and so on, how many times you want it to post. And although you can post once or twice a day, I wouldn't recommend that because in most cases, it's too much. I would say maybe every week, every uh, once a week. And what I would do is uh, put a suitable keyword in here. If I wanted to post more often, let's say every other day, then I would put a whole bunch of keywords in here that are related to the main topic, but are varied sufficiently that the articles are going to have a slightly different slant. Now, this is one of the ways you can use the keyword suggestion tool. We'll come back to jobs in a moment. Um, so if we go into the suggest keyword option here, let me just move that a little bit. Um, let's deal with acne and hit suggest. Now we're going to get a bunch of keywords related to acne. Some of these I hadn't thought about, and they are slightly different takes on the overall topic. So acne as a main content idea is fine, but we have cystic acne, fungal acne, acne scars. That's one I hadn't thought of at all. So that would be a good one to deal with. Acne treatment, how to get rid of scars. So now we have two that are similarly linked, acne scars and how to get rid of them. So if I create two different jobs, I can use these uh, two different keywords to kind of ring the changes. In other words, I'll get uh, content and articles that are similar and thematically linked, but they're not going to be the same because they are slightly different focuses. Uh, acne studios, I have no idea what that is. Hormonal acne, acne scar treatment. Okay, so that's slightly different again from how to get rid of. So these are three slightly different uh, takes on the question of acne scars. How to get rid of acne, that's another one. Uh, spironolactone, no idea. Types of acne, that's a more general um, kind of content. So I'm seeing about four or five keywords here. Uh, acne patch haven't heard of them, back acne, there's very different um, kind of psychological implications if it's on your back and you play sports at school compared to on your face. Uh, and it may well be that it's uh, you know more difficult to treat, I'm not sure. But it's a separate topic that is related to the main keyword. So I think we've got about five or six keywords so far. Um, how to get rid of back acne, well that's clearly related to that main topic there. So now I've got another uh, keyword which will give me um, the, I've got a question from Birgit which we'll look at in a moment uh, this would give me another take on the overall topic medication okay face wash forehead body wash okay spot treatment tea tree oil for acne that's a very specific kind of um, keyword let me show you how I would use that one so tea tree oil for acne I would actually go uh, with acne prevention probably, and then T3, oops, if I can spell, oil. So this is now going to look for content to do with acne prevention and tea tree oil. Um, if anybody lost my audio, I was just explaining that uh, I would use tea tree oil for acne prevention this way. I'd put the main topic here and then use the tea tree oil as a sub keyword and I actually will generate a, an article on this it's uh, only going to take a moment or two while that's working uh, let me go back to um, Birgit's question these are easy keywords but I challenge you to try hardwood flooring mowing service and painting contractor okay it's a good point uh, once this article has appeared I will do exactly that and we'll see what we can come up with now Here's the thing, sometimes you're going to have to think around the topic. So a painting contractor is a specific type of keyword, but you have to think about what a real person is interested in, because that's what we're going to get. If we do well in the search engines, a real person is going to come and look at our content. So if I'm looking for a painting contractor, I might be looking for recommendations, I might be looking for affordability, I might be looking for quick availability, I might be looking for specialized treatments to deal with uh, damp coursing and that kind of a thing. So have a think around the topic, and hopefully it will be a topic that you know something about, uh, to find keywords that are related. I'm going to have a look in a moment when the article is generated, which... Um, 
not quite sure what's happening there, but we'll see in a moment or two. Uh, Meg is asking a question, so we'll come back to Birgit's in a moment. Meg is asking, some of the suggestions for keywords are longer than five words. Should we still split up the keyword into keywords and sub-keywords? Yeah, I'll go back and see if we can find some longer keyword suggestions there, and I'll show you how I would split them. Uh, but if you've got a 10-word phrase, it's too long. It's too long. It's, it's, you're not going to get an article of any quality that way because the artificial intelligence isn't designed that way. Um, bear in mind, we're looking at what would a real person expect to hear. So your keywords should be as succinct as possible to answer a question for somebody. So hardwood flooring. So there are types of hardwood flooring. There's hardwood flooring installation. I'm just making these up as I'm thinking, but I'm going to have a look on the keyword suggestion tool. Uh, hardwood flooring installation types, cost of hardwood flooring, durability of hardwood flooring, um, weatherproofing hardwood flooring. I mean, I don't know if that's a thing, but I assume that in some climates um, it, it might affect the wood. And then there will be different grades of hardwood flooring. Um, it might be that certain, I don't know, as you can see, I'm not really much of a, a DIY guy. It may be that certain hardwood flooring is more prone to marking uh, if you have people walking in high heels and stilettos. I don't know, but it's something I could look at. And a person looking at hardwood flooring uh, may be looking at all kinds of different types of query. So that's what I would be trying to dig down into so that I can answer as many questions as possible. That's what we're looking for. So acne prevention, how to avoid them, creams, olive leaf, okay, tea tree oil, okay. So we've got an article, acne prevention, tea tree oil, tea tree oil is in there. Uh, let me read this for you so you can, I'm going to read it for you and then you tell me if this sounds like a decent article because splitting it in this way gives the artificial intelligence engine a little bit more to work on okay if you just put a massive long keyword in it's you're kind of hobbling the engine a lot of people are looking for acne prevention there are several methods to cure acne that include using acne products like creams and lotion but they do not really work permanently sometimes even they can make your acne worse this is why people are looking for acne prevention which can actually cure acne without any side effects Olive leaf extract is considered as one of the best natural acne prevention treatments. Tea tree oil is also used as an acne prevention. It helps reduce the inflammation caused by excess oil on the pores. By everyday use, olive leaf extract and tea tree oil reduce the likelihood of sebum oil formation on the skin, hence leaving it clean and fresh. One of the best ways to fight this problem is by drinking olive leaf and tea tree oil. Oh, well, we've changed that bit uh, because it will help to regulate your immune system and fight inflammation. Another good acne prevention is by applying pure tea tree oil or olive leaf extract on your skin daily. Okay, so I'm not going to read the entire thing, but we've got a bit more further on, as you can see. Um, it talks about that again, and fish and vegetables and water. So not a bad article. There may be a little bit that you need to um, change here and there. These are 100% unique. Let me just put that one through Copyscape. <clears throat> And I'll just take a little swig of water. My article post uh, copyscape, no duplicates were found. On the synthesis tab, they are 100% unique. <clears throat> now, let's go back to the suggestion tool. Uh, and we're going to see what we can get with hardwood flooring. And if we get some long, long phrases, then we'll have a look at those as well. I'm not seeing anything massively uh, long tail here, but look, we've got hardwood floor, refinishing, best vacuum for hardwood floors, how to clean them, the type of cleaner you would use, installation, I guessed that one, didn't I? Cost, yes. Uh, hardwood flooring near me, okay. Cost to refinish hardwood floors, best mop for hardwood floors, interesting. Um, so quite a few about cleaning, so that's uh, colors. I hadn't thought of that. So, yeah, matching it to your decor. So, uh, there we go. Gray hardwood floors. Okay, for those who are interested in that, fine. Chair mat for hardwood floor. Now, that's interesting because I, 
I kind of guess that there might be some types of hardwood that would be marked more easily. So if people are searching, five and a half thousand people a month are searching for chair mats for hardwood floors. I'm guessing, I, I don't know this topic, but I'm guessing they want to protect their floor from the uh, any kind of marks from their chairs. Because when you sit on it, you've got the full weight of a person pressing down, usually on four legs of the chair. So that's kind of concentrating the weight of a person. Uh, repairs, okay, so if you have a fat hardwood floor already, what about repairing dark hardwood floors? Coming back to the colors of question, oak, pre-finished. Okay, now I don't know much about that, but I guess, uh, is this for kind of home installation? So I've seen at least half a dozen keywords here that will generate articles for me, and I can keep looking. I can get another few, okay, because if I just do the same keyword over and over, if I'm going on the same blog this is, then I'm kind of wasting my own time. So staining and sanding them, okay. Again, things I'm not sure about, but maybe if you have a natural finish hardwood floor later on, you might want to stain it. Would you get somebody to do it? Can you do it yourself? Vinyl hardwood flooring, no idea what that means. Uh, stained colors, that's related back to here. So that's related uh, content. Hickory and laminate hardwood floorings. So couple of ideas there. Uh, let's have a look. Mowing service. Okay. Let me just um, come back and do mowing service. Mowing. Oops. Can't type. Mowing service. So, again, there'll be obvious things like cost, um, repair services for lowing, uh, lawn mowers. Okay. Services near me. Residential lawn mowing. Okay. Interesting. So, um, most of the people, I guess, looking at this will be wanting their, their own garden uh, done. But it might be that there are some, I don't know, um, buildings, uh, commercial premises that have some kind of frontage that needs it doing. So they made a slightly different type of service. Uh, lawn mower repair services, sharpening service, okay. Um, and mowing service, so that, that could also include service to your lawn mower, sales and service, cheap lawn mowing services, that's an interesting one. Uh, yard mowing service, that's a slightly different uh, keyword again. I'm just scrolling down. Riding lawn mower service, if, you, if you've got a bigger garden. Uh, mobile mower service, again, these are terms that we would uh, get slightly different articles from because they would be a slightly different emphasis. Painting contractor, okay. Let's have a look what we get with that. Painting contractors, commercial painting contractors, that's different, local painting contractors, uh, exterior painting compared to interior, okay. Then we've got some uh, local terms, house painting, Interior, there we go. Residential. Kitchen cabinet painting. People actually searching for that. That's interesting. Uh, painting contractor license. Do you need to be licensed? I don't know. But if you do, then it's good information to give people who are searching for a contractor to know that they should be licensed, perhaps in their state, uh, so that they can pick the right kind of person. Industrial drywall and painting. I, okay, that's uh, installation again, isn't it? Kitchen cabinet, we've seen again, that's a slightly longer keyword. Uh, let's have a look. Interior painting. I don't know what the NAICS code is. I could look it up, but uh, presumably if you know something about painting contractors, because that's your topic, you might know what that is. Um, and then painting contractor salary. That's an odd one, isn't it, if you're looking for a painting contractor? But it might be an interesting um, article on your blog so that people can understand why they have to pay a certain amount for a painting contractor to do their kitchen or their exterior. Because if the salary is, is quite high, because they have to go through a lot of training and licensing and certification, if that's the case in your state, uh, then that might be a good way to explain to people that, you know, if you're looking at somebody who's really super cheap, there's probably a reason for that. And it's not likely to be because they're super certified. So these can form uh, an excellent basis for um, keywords that you put in here. But sure, there are certain keywords that are going to be tougher than others. But again, think outside the box. So Renard is asking about house buyout. Oh man, the, is the audio okay now? Because I don't know why this is 
causing problems. I'm not sure why we're getting this now. It's uh, never happened with this microphone before. Okay, well, hopefully you'll, you'll uh, pick up on this. So when you're looking at your main keyword, think outside the box. In other words, we've got a suggestion from Renard, house buyers, house buyers. Okay, what do house buyers, what are they interested in? Okay, so there's going to be finding a good property, there's going to be renovations, there's going to be moving costs, there's going to be finding a good realtor, real estate agent. So cash buyers, okay, fast house buyers. Um, buyers market, so house buyers, Renard, are you talking about people who want to buy a house? or kind of um, organizations that buy them from people in some kind of distress. Open house checklist for buyers. Okay, that's a good one. Uh, budget new house buyers. Okay. Down payment on, uh, here's a great keyword. Look at this one. Uh, when I say great, I mean it's a, a long keyword. Let me just try and, can I move this? It's a long, here, this one, here we go. Let me use that selected keyword. How many houses do first time house buyers look at? You're not going to get an article with that phrase. It's too long. It's way too long. You're not going to get a decent article out of that. So what's the whole point about that keyword? So how many houses do you have to look at before you can buy? Uh, this is really how long does it take you to find a a house isn't it you know whether you have to look at 50 um, so I would probably let me think about that keyword for a moment and I'll show you how I would break it down uh, but Renard was saying people who are selling so um, if you're selling then there'll be a whole bunch of tips that you would use so we'll start with selling a house and notice I put selling a house but I could also put in, in a moment, selling your home. So I've got a bunch of keywords here. Cost of selling a house, how to sell a house, taxes on selling a house, uh, capital gains, how to sell without a realtor, selling a house as is, interesting. Um, how long does it take to sell? Okay, interesting. How to sell a house fast. Tax implications, what not to fix. Well, oh, that's a good one, what not to fix, because there might be things that it's a waste of money because people don't care. Can you sell a house with a mortgage? Do you pay taxes? Selling a house with a mortgage. There's a lot of good stuff in here. A lot of good stuff in here. So let me go back to this one. How many homes do first-time buyers look at? So what I'm interested in is first-time house buyers. So that's my general topic, right? First time house buyers. Average, oops, average purchase time. So what it's going to do now is give me a topic article to do with first time house buyers or home buyers. We could use either of those terms. And it's going to try and find content related to the sub keyword average purchase time. I'm actually going to run this and see what we get because I don't know. But that's the kind of thinking you need to do if you have a difficult keyword that's like 15 or 10 or 15 words long. Is that making sense to everybody? You kind of break it down to what's the main topic for the main keyword? What, it, what is it about? And in my case, it was first time buyers, right? It wasn't the length of uh, how long it takes to buy because that could apply to experienced buyers. It could apply to commercial buyers. It was the fact that first time buyers we were thinking of. Then in the sub keyword, I want to know a little bit more about how long it takes them to buy, but I don't want a long keyword in there. So I put average purchase time. Uh, so let's generate the article. And while that's generating, um, I'm going to have a look at questions. We're going to clearly we're going to go over the 30 minutes uh, a little bit, but I'll try to keep it not too long because essentially what I'm doing here, <clears throat> excuse me, is looking for different keywords that are related to the same topic. One second, quick drink. Apologies. So what I'm looking for uh, is multiple keywords, keywords that I can split 
into a keyword and sub keyword. I don't have to do that every time, by the way. And that's for creating the articles. Now, the job tab, and Michael was asking about this earlier, the job tab is a, identical. It's the same thing. So what I want to do is create a job that will post maybe once a week, maybe every other day. But the more frequently I want it to pe uh, post, the more keywords I have to enter into that block of keywords, which I'll show you again in a minute or two. Is it running? Did I hit generate? I can't remember. Let me just look. Uh, don't think I did. Let me just... I might have done. I'm not sure. Uh, I'll leave it running for a moment. So with the job panel, what I need to do is essentially the same thing, but I choose all my keywords and then list them in one block, right? So that the articles can pick selective, uh, can, can pick randomly from that block of keywords and create an article from them and basically rotate through them. What it does is give me variety. Uh, and if I put five keywords in there, then I can certainly get five articles. I might be able to get 10 decent articles, depending on the keywords. But I wouldn't try to get 50. With five keywords, 10 articles on each keyword is going to be way too many. So what you really need to be doing is selecting a, a good bunch of keywords. Now, those of you who are Gold Pass members, those of you who are Keyword Titan users, we did some training recently, if you remember, uh, and those training webinars are in the help area in Keyword Titan. The same comments that apply to that keyword training kind of apply here. What you need to be doing is selecting good keywords that are related to your topic and expand on the topic so that you can answer more of the questions that people may have. Because ultimately, you're going to get somebody come along who's looking for answers and if they land on your blog and they don't get answers it's it's kind of a waste of your traffic okay uh yeah i'm not sure meg i'm not quite sure why it's it seems to have frozen on me i've got this weird thing going on uh in fact let me just uh, do something here i've got this weird thing going on uh, because of my monitors so they've got um for some reason it doesn't seem to like me using multiple monitors with synthesis. So I'm going to log back in and we'll do that again. Um, let me just drag this over and I've forgotten what I put. I think I put um, first time buyers or first time house buyers. Average purchase time. That was it, wasn't it? Yeah. So let's generate the article and then uh, just be patient. Take a minute or two. Uh, if you've got any other questions, by the way, ask them now, because I'll try to close this up in about five minutes or so. But is everybody getting the idea of how to use the keywords and the sub keywords? Because if you use them in the way that I'm showing you, you'll get a better quality article. Now, let's be let's be completely honest with each other. You're not going to get a 100 percent uh, perfect article every single time. Sometimes you may have to do a couple of minutes tweaking. Right. The tea tree and acne article I showed you, it suggested uh, drinking tea tree oil. I would take that out. I don't recommend that at all. Um, but it's a couple of seconds to change it. So you've got to have a look at what you're doing anyway. With the job posting, you need to have you've got to feed the engine with lots of good keywords. So the real job in generating automatic jobs is creating a good keyword list. Now, if you don't have a keyword tool, um, you need to think about getting one. You can use the keyword suggestion box here, and that's fine, but you may have to tweak the keywords a little bit. We'll have another look at the keyword suggestion tool in a moment if there's time. But you really do need to be thinking about keywords that relate to your topic. And we, we had an example earlier about um, uh, floors, hardwood floors, and so on. There are lots of keywords related to that main topic that people might be interested in. You see, if you talk about golf, if we said the main keyword is golf, what is a person looking for? Give me some ideas. Give me some ideas. If I had that main keyword for golf, what, what is my um, perfect site visitor looking for? Okay, got one answer from Meg. Anybody else? Uh, Bugit, yes, you can post as drafts so you can look over them. We do have that option. Renard's got a different answer. Meg's coming up with another. So I've got three so far. 
Three totally different answers, by the way. Okay, let me just uh, resize this so we can have a look at it in a moment. So, golf clubs, how to swing, improve my game, links course, courses near me, golfing tutors, uh, driving ranges, um, rehabilitation if you have um, injuries, how to score, how, how golf is scored, rules of golf. Are you, are you following what I'm saying here? Because what I'm saying is that an overall topic can have so many multiple subtopics within it that we want to narrow down a little bit to try to attract the right people. But we also need to answer questions around the topic so that people who are generally interested in it will have lots of good content on our website to, to look at. So if I'm a golfer and I'm looking for a local club and I happen to land on your website, you may have a page that says, uh, here's a link, links course. That's great. But then if I see on your navigation bar that you have uh, how to improve my game, I'd be interested in that as well. It might not be the article that brings me to your blog, but it might well be the article that keeps me on your blog long enough to click your monetized links. Does that make sense? Um, Birgit, no, I, we, we don't have any plans to increase beyond 750 words, no. So let me have a look at this very quickly. Okay. So this talks about the average purchase time, but doesn't actually tell you how long that might be. But it tells you that the time can vary. So it's covering that. It, it's dealing with it in a generic sense. Yeah. OK. OK, so it's got a little bit in there. So it's certainly um, covered that topic. Now, in this paragraph here where it says that uh, the length of time can vary, if I know, because I'm researching the topic because it's my topic for my blog, if I know that the average time for completing a purchase is, say, 90 days, I'm, I, I don't know, I'm just making that up. Let's say it's 90 days. Uh, well, we can just change it, can't we? So let's uh, have a look. So what we might do, uh, is put, um, yeah, we, we might just add a little paragraph ourselves, maybe be before this or after, uh, something along the lines of, on average, the first time purchase uh, duration is about 90 days, but it can vary widely. So that's what, uh, about 15 words or so, and then that matches nicely with the rest of the article. So by thinking about what is the main topic, first time house buyers, and then the subtopic was what's the length of time, the average purchase time. We split it out into main keyword and sub keyword. And you notice I've only used a single one here. I could have put multiple sub keywords in there. But if you do that, you'll often find it's going to narrow your options too much. If you've got really good sub keywords or alternative uh, sub keywords that mean the same thing, such as that, typical purchase time, that's fine. But what we're seeing when we've analyzed how people are using keywords, they put in totally unrelated keywords. Okay. Now, at the beginning, I said some really weird things, didn't I? Let me just go back to um, those slides just to show you. Better synthesis use how to. Uh, I mean, that doesn't make sense, does it? And then when we tried again, how to use synthesis better. So they were examples to show you that natural language is what we should be thinking of because it's what people are going to read on your blog and expect. If you have a keyword that's all sort of back to front, and it's amazing how many people are doing that, it might well be good for Googling the search engines, but it's no good for somebody on your blog. So distinguish between keywords that are for Google ranking and keywords that are for creating your content so it reads like natural language. Google will be able to understand that how to use synthesis better is actually logically the same as better synthesis used to how. They'll do that conversion for you. You don't need to, okay? You don't need to. Let them do the work for you. Um, so if we go back to synthesis, just bear with me. Uh, so we've got an article there. I could have put a couple of P word, uh, uh, keywords in sub keywords because those 
are essentially the same keywords or same meaning, but I wouldn't put something totally different like, um, um, uh, what's the, uh, hiring a trailer to move? It just doesn't make any sense, does it? It's kind of outside the scope of the, the overall topic, and therefore it's going to spoil your article. So if you've ever got an article that doesn't make a lot of sense, or it's a, it seems a low quality article, it might just be that your choice of keywords isn't as optimal as it could be. Uh, let's have a look if I've got any questions that I've missed. Any questions in the last minute or two? Because I want to make sure that you all walk away from this with a better understanding of what kind of keywords to, to, to use. Let's have a look at the suggestion again. Uh, and I've forgotten what I was going to put in there. So uh, what were we going to do? Anybody remind me what were we going to post in here? Best realtors to buy from, Ted's asking. Let's have a look. I'll put the shorter keyword, best realtors, because the suggestion will give me any other real search terms related to that topic. And there might well be best realtors to buy from. Best near me, best lead generation, best realtors in my area. That would probably be more, more useful to people, I think, rather than to buy from. Uh, how to find the best realtor, great keyword, right? Best rated realtors. Um, and then we've got a lot of uh, the local ones as well. Hmm. Good question from Meg, so let me just read this out loud first while I'm thinking about it. Any tips for rare keywords? Maybe keywords that people don't search for very often, or is it best not to use these? Okay, that's a big question. So first off, we've got to please Google, and we've got to please a real person landing on the website, right? So we've got to do both. So for Google, using keywords, even if they're not particularly searched for very often, will expand the reach of your blog. It will show Google that you're dealing with a topic in more detail. And so some of those rare keywords are good to use, but not as the first articles on your blog. You kind of put them in later to round out the blog. Does that make sense? You wouldn't necessarily want them to be uh, your main articles, because if people aren't searching for them, it's not that big a deal, because you're not going to get or virtually not going to get anybody. But by expanding the scope and reach of the entire blog, you're going to get some of those. And we've, we use this term a lot, I know, but it's a good one to use. We use these bonus keywords term to mean keywords that Google will rank you for that you hadn't even really thought of because they've analyzed your entire site and content and they have an idea where they can position that content for their benefit. So when you've got a good broad reach of content, you're giving them more food to digest and work out where are we going to put this stuff. So uh, some of those, but I wouldn't, you know, as, as a percentage, if you want a, a rough percentage, if you're doing, you know, five, maybe maybe even 10% of those keywords, um, that would be as much as I would think about. But yes, they are, the, the short answer is yes, they're good to sprinkle in. If you think as a condiment, a little bit of salt goes a long way. A little bit of pepper goes a long way. Uh, if you drown your food in salt, you've ruined it. So if you think of the rare keywords as being a condiment, where they add a little bit of flavor with judicious use, then that's a good way to think of it. But uh, don't do too many of them, because <laughs> it's it's not worth the effort. But a little sprinkling here and there goes a long way. So let me go back to the jobs, just to clarify for this. Michael was asking about these earlier. Michael, have you got any other questions? Um, Interesting, Michael's got problems with audio, but other people have told me the audio has been okay throughout. Michael, if you can hear me, on the jobs, we've kind of covered it so far, but was there anything else about jobs, if you can hear me, uh, that you wanted to know about? And I'm just going to take a sip of water while that uh, gives Michael a chance to answer. And if anybody else is... Um, interested in more on the jobs. Let me know, are you are you getting the idea for the jobs where we put in keywords? Let me just do this over here. So what I was saying is put your keywords in here and you're not just going to put weight loss and then expect to post once a day and get beautiful articles. It, it just doesn't make sense. So you've got weight loss, 
weight loss diet plan. Keto for weight loss, right? Um, uh, fast weight loss. Paleo diet, healthy eating plan. Can you see I'm getting a batch of keywords, so I'm going to get more articles, and those are rounded articles. They are all about the topic of weight loss, diet plans, keto, healthy eating plan, um, exercising to lose weight. All these things are related, and by the time these articles are published on my blog, Google is going to see really good content that's related to the main topic. Uh, Renard, yes, there's going to be a replay. Uh, Michael's asking, what would I suggest is the maximum articles in a job queue? Hmm. Well, it depends how many of these keywords you have, uh, Michael. So I personally, I would, um, you know, put a, a good batch of these in. And bear in mind, for a blog, you may not need more than 10 or 20 articles anyway if you build some backlinks to get your rankings. So you don't have to have 500 articles on a blog. 10 or 20 is often plenty, right? 10 or 20 is often plenty. Stop posting at that point. Think about related topics. Start posting those if you can think of another topic. So I've got exercising to lose weight here. So uh, let's do cardio for weight loss. That's uh, starting to talk about exercise regimes now, right? Um, does muscle burn fat? Um, and, and, you know, we're starting to expand the topic now. So you could, end, you, you could then expand your blog even further with related topics. And again, you get the same impact with uh, Google. Let me just go down. Will it go down the list and generate a new article each time? Yes, it will. So it will just work its way randomly here to create an article. And depending on what you say here, um, it will do once a day, twice a day, once a week. So if you did once a week, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This would represent nine, nine weeks. Um, nine weeks with those. If I put 20 articles, it represents 20 weeks. If I put twice a day, which I don't recommend unless you've got a massive, massive list. Um, if I did twice a day, that would be, uh, what, four days? That would be used up that list in four days. The other thing is, once you've finished this, let's say you've got all nine articles created, you can delete the job and start a new one. Or you can delete the list of keywords and put in fresh keywords, which are related to your main topic. The thing that you have to do is ring the changes. So it's tempting, I know, to think about creating thousands of articles on a blog. and you, Oh, I'm going to have thousands of pages. No, you don't need to do that. I would think about, you know, 10, 20, 30, that's fine if you've got a good batch of keywords that explore the topic. But then you will find in most cases, now I'm not sure about hardwood flooring, I'll be honest, but in many cases you will find that you can expand the topic even further with a new batch of keywords. So we've talked now about exercising, cardio, does muscle burn fat, um, low impact aerobic, aerobic exercise, aerobic exercise, benefits and there's lots of those um, you know and then we can talk about you know yoga uh, we can talk about the Pilates technique all kinds of different things that relate to health flexibility weight loss calorie burning that kind of thing and there's another calorie burning so you can see you can expand if you wish to to keep posting to a single blog by putting in new keywords. You can edit the job and, and put in new keywords. The thing to avoid is the temptation to put a single keyword and just post twice a day for the rest of your life. We've seen people do that. We have seen people put in a single keyword and a very generic keyword at that and then post twice a day. Well, all you're gonna do is show Google that you're talking about the same thing over and over. I mean, that's not gonna get you ranked. <laughs> It's it's the same as a friend who tells you the same story over and over. At some point, it gets boring, right? You know, if they tell you a new story every time you meet them, oh, that's funny, that's cool, well, you know, interesting. But if they tell you the same one every single time, come on, we're gonna all going to get bored. 
So ring the changes, put in the keywords, get as many as you can. This does require keyword research, yes, I know. And, and you can use the suggestion tool. So uh, let's have a look, aerobic exercise. Let's see what else I can find related to that. So if we've now got a new topic of aerobic exercise on that blog to do with weight loss, it's related. Aerobic exercise is related to weight loss. There, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 22, 23, 24. 24 keywords that will give me 24 articles because they're all slightly differently uh, worded. And that gives me 24 potential articles to go on my weight loss blog where I'd just thought of nine keywords earlier. That's 33 articles I'm thinking about now. That's, that's a big blog. That's a big blog. 33 articles, that's great. That's plenty for Google. Now you've got to start getting some backlinks, okay? Does that make sense to everybody? Because when we think too narrow about our topic, we're limiting ourselves for the people who arrive on our website to capture their imagination and interest. So weight loss is great. You know, somebody wants to come and find a, a diet plan for weight loss, but they might want to tone up. They might want to do a little exercise. They might want to find exercise that's dead easy to do. They might want to join a gym. They might want to find a personal trainer. So we could, well, let's have a look. Personal trainer. You know, because if you're thinking about losing weight, you're thinking about exercise and diet, you might want to find a personal trainer. Certification, how to become one online. Oh, okay, so I can do that at home instead of joining a gym. How much do they cost? Um Virtual personal trainers, similar thing. Personal fitness trainer at home, average personal trainer cost, that's a good one. So again, that's what another four, five, six topics that are very closely related to the topic of exercise and weight loss and health and so on and so on and so on. So really with the jobs, there's absolutely no excuse to use a single keyword and just keep posting all the time, right? Because when you explore your topic, in a more rounded fashion, and I apologize because we've gone way over the 30 minutes, but I, I want to make sure these points are clear. When you explore your topic in a more rounded fashion, you're more likely to rank in Google, cool, but you're also more likely to meet the needs of the real person visiting your site. And that's where you make the money. You can rank number one on page one, and when somebody comes to your site, you've got lousy content, they're not gonna buy anything from you, and they're not gonna take your recommendation, but you put some good content on there, that meets their needs, bingo. That's where we start making some money. So with the jobs, which is a great use of, of synthesis, by the way, so I recommend that you use auto posting. Really important to think about good keywords. Uh, and if that means that you've got to spend an hour building up a good list of keywords, do it, spend the hour, spend two hours if you have to, because that will save you weeks and weeks of work later down the line. So the keyword is really essential. Um, we've gone over a couple of ideas for using them. You can see what I was saying about the main keyword, the sub keywords. Think about what your main topic is for your main keyword. And then if you're wanting to narrow it down a little bit, you use the sub keyword for doing that. Uh, let me just clear that out a little bit. Another one that's quite useful is the how to lose weight fast. So that is a general kind of topic, how to lose weight fast, how to find um, cheap property, how to I don't know, save money cooking at home, that kind of thing. How to is quite a good one to use. And then in the sub keywords, how to lose weight fast. And if we put aerobic exercise, it's going to try to talk about that within the main topic of housing, how to lose weight fast. So you can, again, you can just kind of nudge the direction of the article with the sub keyword. Does, does that make sense to everybody? Is there anything that isn't clear? Because I want to make sure that everybody can use this in your own article generation. Uh, Liz, yes, there will be a, a replay. Yes, absolutely. And it will actually be embedded in the help 
uh, tab for you so that you can <laughs> have few, she says. <laughs> um, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be embedded because you. I know there's a lot, and you may want to watch this a couple of times about the keywords particularly. Uh, for the for the length of article, use a simple keyword for 50 words because that's all you can do. And these are snippets that are great for newsletters, social media posts, and so on. Short ones, um, a 250 word article again is okay as kind of filler content or maybe for a longer newsletter. But most of you are going to be using five or 750 words for a blog post. You don't have to use the generate article title. Let me just explain that uh, briefly before we finish. It will try to come up with an article title for you. But if you have a particular focus in mind, this is on the manual uh, tab here, the create tab, you can do without and then just create the article title yourself later. Probably most of you will want to generate an article title to give you an idea, but you know you don't have to. So for the jobs, um, as you can see, the, there isn't that option to avoid an article title. You have to have an article title generated for you. Uh, I forgot to mention about the posting hours. If you leave it as it is, when it's going to post between midnight now and midnight tomorrow, it's going to pick a random time for you. That's so that the posting will look a little bit more realistic. Because if you only ever post at, say, 7 a.m., it looks a little bit suspicious. Google might think you've got automated posting. On the other hand, if you want it to post, uh, say, 9 a.m. when you awake, and you might finish, nobody's ever going to work at midnight, or generally won't be. You might want to do that. You might want to specify sort of working hours when it will post, and it will pick a random time within those. I recommend that you choose your own hours so that you're going to get um, random within those hours, and they're going to be different from everybody else's pattern. If you all use the same default, which is 12 till 12, then it's going to look, it's not suspicious as such, but it's, it's, you're going to have similar patterns, which, you know, how many of you are really going to be posting at two minutes past midnight? And then another blog post at five minutes to midnight the next day. It doesn't sound very honest and likely, does it? So what I would recommend you do is pick the times in here that you would likely to be, be online and posting and actively doing some work. And for some people, it might be 5 a.m. to, uh, you know, 2 p.m. For others, it might be 10 a.m. to uh, 8 p.m., whatever your times may be. And it is the uh, Eastern time zone. So wherever you happen to live, you might need to take that into account uh, because 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern time zone would be uh, 3 p.m. in the UK for me, uh, probably 2 a.m. for Michael over in New Zealand. And, you know, depending on where you are, you might want to ring the changes there as well. Let's have a look. Any questions I've missed? Oh, here's a good one. Since these are original articles, when would I use spinning? Okay. My personal advice is never. You can use spinning if you want to. Let me, I'm going to spin this for you now. So we've got the text version here. And I'm going to spin it. Uh, has that been fixed? I think we had a problem with it the other week. I think Paolo's fixed that. Uh, and here we've got a spun version. Okay. You've got a spun version. What are you going to do with it? It's going to be a lower quality than the original. If you want to use it to tweak it yourself a little bit manually and then add it onto a separate block somewhere, you could use it like that. But with the synthesis articles, you're getting a very high quality one to begin with. I don't know if it makes a lot of sense to spin it, to be honest. I'm not sure. It's there as a feature if you wanted to, and some people will. Um, but generally speaking, I'd just go generate another article later. And here's another thing. If you generate an article now, and then use the same keywords to generate an article in another two minutes, they're going to be fairly close. They're going to be similar. If you come back in a week and use the same keyword, there's new content, there's new ideas, there's new algorithms, you're going to get a slightly different article. So instead of using this same keyword now 15 times manually, 
use a different keyword then another keyword and a different keyword and then next week if you want to come back and start again with the same ones but also bear in mind that you can publish these articles on different blogs so you don't have to put them all on the same blog and again we're seeing people doing that so when you're doing the jobs the more blogs you have on here the better because if you have a weight loss article on blog A and then you've got a weight loss article on blog B that's relatively similar it's not going to be identical because they are unique remember but it's it's similar in feeling well they're different blogs and by adding different content to each of those blogs Google will choose the rankings for you right so remember by adding lots of good content to all of your blogs you're going to find that Google will find some places for you to rank and keywords that you never even thought of so that's my take on spinning, but, but I mean, you can if you want to. If you spin manually, which th this doesn't allow you to spin manually, but if you use the best spinner to spin manually with your original good quality article, then yeah, yeah, that can give you another article and you can get maybe three or four or five good articles out of them if you know how to spin well. But most people, in my experience, find spinning that way unpleasant. It, it takes a particular type of mindset. So if you can do it, wonderful. If you can't, I would probably just settle for having a unique article. Um, Ted is asking, are the keyword suggestions drawn from Google in the uh, tool here? Um, oh, I haven't put anything in, have it? Yes, they are. Um, and that's why you get search volume and cost per click. So um, through yoga. Let's put yoga just to put something in there. So these are suggestions that come from uh, Google and you've got the search volume the cost per click as well to give you an indication uh, Okay, yoga pants yoga mat naked yoga nude yoga. That's a thing never heard of it, but there you go uh, Yoga classes Bikram yoga. I Don't know what aerial yoga is but you know Kundalini yoga and Bikram are slightly different types uh, The benefits of yoga and that's a good keyword best yoga mat Hatha yoga So yeah um, so in answer to your question Ted yes they come from Google do these credit uh, does it cost to use the keyword section um, uh, yes you, you, you've you've got to uh, I think I can't remember quite honestly I think it's I think it's one credit but it does uh, yeah because it costs us to to go through Google we actually have to pay um, to retrieve that information so it does cost credits yes but generally speaking, if you're choosing a sensible keyword here as your seed keyword, the starting point, you're going to get a lot of results, a lot of results. Uh, and those results will give you a ton of ideas for your keywords either here or in the jobs. It's more important in the jobs tab here because you really need a good long list of keywords to be able to generate a good long list of articles that make sense on your blog. Um, so if you're only going to put one or two keywords in here, then I would say just post once a week and then after a couple of weeks, come back and put some more keywords or delete the job. OK, if you delete the job, just in case anybody wonders, um, it doesn't delete your post. You, your post is safe. All it does is stop it posting again in the future. Uh, now, the, the new update that will be coming out in a week or two will allow you to do some extra in the create tab you'll be able to add links within the article automatically with keyword substitution so if you say i want to link to a clickbank product where i have the keyword aerobic exercise in my article it will do that for you so that's the first thing the second thing i, I said earlier that you can do these as um, draft articles that's a new feature you can't at the moment so i apologize you should have said that uh, there will be a, a little box here that allows you to post as draft so that if you want to go into your blog later and then have a look at the articles add to them clean them up that kind of thing you'll be able to do that just with one uh, checkbox here so that will also be in a future update which should be within a week or two and we've got to test them of course to make sure they're cool so let's have a look if we enter our own keywords can we do that too uh liz i'm not sure what you mean by that i'm not quite sure what you mean can you just clarify for me not sure what you mean by that
Any other questions? Or I just showed the list of keywords. In here, um, well, you, you have to put in your own keywords here to tell the job. Yeah, so in here, you put your own keywords. How you find those keywords is up to you. You can use the suggestion tool. If you're a Gold Pass member, you can use the keyword Titan. If you have a different tool, you can use that. Um, that's fine. But you have to put keywords in here. Otherwise, it can't generate articles. Um, so, again, if you want a lot of articles, put in a lot of keywords. Okay, so we've gone just over an hour. So that's twice as uh, long as I promised. That's fairly common, as you know, when we're doing webinars where we're training. Uh, last final minute for any questions. If there are any, I'll take them. If not, then we're going to say goodbye in a minute or so. But yeah, with the jobs, got to put these in here, some keywords, otherwise it can't generate any jobs. And really, please try to put as many good keywords in here as you can, because it will give you more good content. It really will. Going back to the question of the blogs, if you've got a blog with 10 or 20 articles, that's okay. But if you want to build it and continue building it, then think about topics that are related to your main topic. Because Google understands that aerobic exercise is related to weight loss. Google understands that diet plans are related to weight loss and related to aerobic exercise. Google understands that yoga is related to exercise. So what you start to get then is a kind of a link from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next. And it helps Google to work out where your content can best be used. And it may not be where you thought. So as long as you're getting a first page ranking, if Google's giving you some bonus rankings, just take it and be glad. Okay, let's have a look. Um, yeah, Michael, I, I think the audio has been okay for most people, so the replay should be okay. Hopefully, if there are any sections that you missed, they will be recorded fine. Uh, will there be a feature for LSI keywords, Heather's asking? Um, within Synthesis, uh, probably not, Heather, because it's taking it outside the realms of what it is, which is a content generation tool. So if you're wanting to look at LSI keywords, it's a fancy term that just means related keywords. If you're wanting to look at that, you would use your, your keyword tool, whichever that might be. Uh, but I don't think we're likely to add that into the Synthesis tool itself, because it would take it outside of the realm of of what it is, to be honest. Uh, where will the replay be? It's going to be in the help section over here. I don't know how soon that will go on, Liz. It might be tomorrow, but it will certainly be within a couple of days because I've got to get John to do some coding to put that in there, and the, the full re replay will be in there for you. Uh, okay, any final questions? If not, we're going to say goodbye because we've gone well over the 30 minutes. <laughs> but I, I think you'll find the information useful when you review this. So thank you for joining me. Interesting, I will mention this to you. We normally expect a certain percentage of the people who register to turn up. That's fairly common in webinars. What I can tell you, and I think this indicates that people uh, are very interested in this topic, is that uh, we've got more than twice as many as we would normally expect based on the registration numbers. So that's great, which means those of you who've turned up are going to be able to make use of this information, and you will get better quality articles out of it. Now, if any of you have a struggle with your particular keywords later when you've thought about this and you think, well, I get what he was saying, the principle of splitting it into a main keyword and sometimes a sub keyword, if you're stuck, then please contact me and I'll see if I can help you with a couple of examples. But that doesn't mean that you can, you know, please don't send me article, please don't send me keyword analysis requests 15 times a day for the rest of your lives, because that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is if you get stuck once, I'll help you out to show you how to analyze the keyword and you can contact me. Uh, but you will need to think about analyzing the keywords the way I've shown you. It does get easier with practice, of course. You know, the first time you might think, well, I don't know how to split this, but always break it down to what's the main principal point? What is the real point that somebody's thinking about? And then you can add a little bit on with your sub keywords. Uh, keyword Titan versus synthesis. I'm not quite sure, Linda, what you mean by that, but they're very, very different tools. Keyword Titan is for analyzing keywords. Synthesis is for producing the content when you've got a list of keywords. 
So they kind of go hand in hand, really. So if you have access to both, you're in a wonderful position. Uh, a few people saying thank you. You're very welcome, everybody. I'm glad you're finding it useful. Uh, and please do, if you've got any questions, let me know. Because what we want you to do is get the best quality articles from Synthesis. It does produce great stuff if you feed it good keywords. The auto posting thing is great if you feed it a good batch of keywords. And a little bit of time spending uh, on, on Keyword Titan or your own keyword tool, if you have a different one, getting a good batch of keywords, I promise you it will save you months of work down the line. So if you have to spend a couple of hours doing that, uh, I just had an idea. Um, okay, if there's enough feedback, and I mean feedback later, not now, if there's enough feedback, we might do a Keyword Titan and Synthesis combined webinar where I actually generate a batch of keywords and show you how to get a, a long batch of keywords that we can feed into the jobs um, section here. And I'll show you how I would do that. Um, and I think that might be useful for those of you who use Keyword Titan and Synthesis. Now, if you don't have Keyword Titan, sorry, uh, you know, it probably wouldn't be of much use to you. Um, but if you have a similar tool, you might find some principles. So if we do a real a real webinar, I'm getting people saying, yes, please. OK, we're going to do that. But here's something where I want you to be proactive. What I want to do is use a topic that you're suggesting. So you give me your suggestions, not now, contact me later, either on the forum or via um, support desk. Give me the topics that you want to see analyzed that way. I'll pick one of them. I can't do all of them, of course. I'll pick one of them and we'll generate a batch of keywords. We'll look at the keywords that I would pick and why. Then we'll feed them into synthesis uh, and I was going to say we might actually make a blog with them. Yeah, let's make a blog with them. I tell you what, what we'll do, uh, let me make a note of what I'm promising because I, I think this will be quite fun. We will make a blog with content from synthesis with those keywords. I will then create a clone of that blog and every synthesis user can have that clone for free. How's that? We'll do that. Yeah, let, let's do that. So. Uh, we're going to create a real blog from a topic you're suggesting with keywords that I analyze. And when the blog's finished, so I'll let it post, you know, say every other day to give it time to create. And when it's finished, I'll give you all a copy of that that you can modify and tweak a little bit and, and uh, create your own version of it yourself. Uh, everybody's saying, yeah, that would be good. Cool. So, Birgit's asking about the forum. We have a, a private members forum for training and all our tools, which is called Prosperative Membership Birgit. So, um, you'll be able to find that. I'll put the link to that in the replay if anybody wants more information. Um, but I think it would be great if you can have a, a – just think a little bit about the topics you want to cover. If I see that there are multiple votes for the same topic, I'll go with that one first. But if not, I'll choose the one that's most interesting. I won't choose obvious ones. So we're not going to do weight loss. We're not going to do acne. Uh, they're too obvious. I'm looking for something that's a little bit tougher so that you can see how to find some keywords and then uh, kind of expand the topic so that Google gives you the rankings you want, but you give people the information they want. So cool. Um, Dog training and knitting from Liz. She's all, uh, or Linda and Liz. They're already suggesting some. Send me the link. Uh, send me the suggestions, please, if you would, on support, because then I need to collate them. I'm not going to choose them today. Um, we'll probably do the training for this next week. Um, probably going to be Monday again, because Tuesday is our regular prosperity training. Uh, so it's probably going to be Monday. So I need suggestions before Monday for the topic. And uh, we'll, we'll have a bit of fun with that one because I think that will be showing you a real life example rather than just a couple of simple examples like this. We'll probably make it kind of cement. OK, thank you very much, everybody. And I'll see you again on the next one. I'll make sure you all get that link uh, as soon as possible. Might be tomorrow with the details and the replay. Might be Wednesday, but I'll do it as soon as we can, certainly within a couple of days anyway. Uh, and it will be worthwhile watching the replay a couple of times if you can, because there's a lot to unpack in this. Thanks again. See you next time. Bye now.